testing out the rig. <laughs> doesn't come down, doesn't come down. Uh, Rose is trying to get stress on the rig, sideways stress. Yeah, it's all very scientific. Very scientific. Today we were going to harness the energy of the sun in a new way. I prepared early by making up a batch of plain bread dough. We were going to test out our new Gosun stove for the first time. Get it, Ravi? Yep. These are our first attempt at making some kind of pastries with pizza dough and sausages. And hopefully, there's a beautiful sun out there and we're gonna get some good results. It should take about 20 minutes in the sun. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to brown or not. And then something curious began to happen. Get it, Jimmy. As we launched our new Gosun stove, hordes of people started to arrive. What were they all here for? The fire department thought it was important, and so did the sheriff. Were they attracted to the wonderful smell of baking bread? I mean, everyone was there. People we knew, people we'd never met before crowded around our boat. There were dogs, there was mayhem, kayakers, motorboats, there was watercraft of every kind. Everybody rafting up to our boat and trying to get in on it. What was this commotion and how could it be caused all by one little boat? Well, to tell you the truth, it wasn't caused entirely just by us cooking with our new Gosun stove, but rather it was also the launching of the Matthew Turner, Sausalito's very own eco tall ship. Happy Solar Hot Dog Day! The Matthew Turner was looking pretty good. She was floating, although her electric engines didn't seem to be functioning yet. She was maneuvered onto the nearby pier with the help of some inflatable ribs, and now she was awaiting her new masts and rigging as well. The new crew of SV Maiway, SV Rosa, and SV Pacific Eagle hoisted me to the top of the mast to get a better view of the launch. What we thought would be an exciting day for solar cooking science also ended up being an exciting day for the community as well.
It's real bread. Real life bread. Mm. That's one of the best breads I've ever made. <laughs> I like the concept that even if we were lost at sea or on a desert island somewhere, we could still pull out the Gosun stove, whip up a batch of, you know, dough, uh, make some rice, even pasta, boil some water if we need it to be purified a bit. You can pretty much do it in any situation that there is at least a little bit of sun. Works best in the full sun worked okay as the sun was going down and the wind was picking up. Overall, very successful. Our roll of sunny days and visiting friends continued on, so we experimented with the solar cooker some more. The food on Esfirosa is not always super fancy, but we try to do the best that we can with simple ingredients. Peeled and cut potatoes with a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, garlic and chili flakes. With the changing of the wind and tide, we needed to switch the Gosun stove around to catch the sun's rays. We're gonna find out what's inside this time. The solar cooker. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. Look at all those lovely julienne potatoes. Oh yeah. That's the stuff right there. We were also worried about the eventuality of losing the stove off the deck. But luckily, our friend Jean had something in mind to save the day. I have you here on the boat to assemble a Gosun stove specialized clamp for our solar cooker so we can make it even more seaworthy so it won't fly off the deck. So here's how it's done. What we wanted to do is put the stove and clamp it on a rail so as the boat's rocking and stuff and people are visiting, it doesn't fly off. I got a hold of Matt Gillespie from Gosun, one of the great guys there, and I told him about the uh, clamps that they sell they use for, uh, for phot photography purposes. Now this particular clamp, it comes with a bunch of stuff in a little bag. It's only $19. <clears throat> you don't need everything that comes on it because we're not using it for photography. We're going to use it for the stove. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and take off the items you don't need. This is an extra device that holds your camera. We're not going to use that. We're not going to use the nut toggle switch that's on the back. We're going to get rid of that. Set it aside. We're going to use just this device. You'll find a Phillips screw here. You have to take this off. It has a spring underneath it. First thing you do is you take, flip it over and take this Phillips screw off and remove this. Now, there's a little spring that goes under there. Spring and washer. But when you take this thing out, there's a little nut inside there that can slide around. We'll get to that in a minute. You want your clamp to be about there or towards the edge, so it doesn't matter. I would prefer it closer to the edge, easier for clamping and stuff. So I'm going to take my first hole and mark it right about there. You have to be real accurate with the first hole because it's just the first hole. Make a mark. Drill a hole, make sure the hole's the size of the bolt. So here we go. Now we're going to measure the distance between these two holes. Two are threaded, two are not. We're going to use the threaded holes. Starting from the one for an accurate reading, it's one inch and three eighths. One inch and three eighths. Center to center. Measure twice, cut once. One, two, three eighths. I'm gonna change bits. Change the bit to a three eighths bit because the screw is gonna slip in through here and you notice that that doesn't slip through. You want the screw head to be flush with this Inside. surface. Take that, line it up with that little hole. Okay, that's all assembled. That's all you do there. Don't forget you got that quarter 20 screw in there. Make sure it's centered. Which it is. This goes back on here. There, it went on good. That's it. Now, let's go up front and try it out. So here's our stove. We brought it out. We've got our clamp. You come over here. You clamp it on. You clamp it on. It takes a really firm grip. 
This handle, you can take it and put it any position you want after you tighten it up by pulling it out and repositioning it. So I make it good and tight, move it all the way, and start cooking. If you want the sun changes, you can lift this up and rotate it to match the sun. It locks every 90 degrees, so if it does lock, you have to bring it up again and rotate it. And there's your stove. And there's another thing you can do. If the sun is on the horizon, you can loosen this up, bring it over a little bit, and readjust it. No more propane, you'll always have a warm meal. Ingenious. You've made this Go Sun stove completely seaworthy now. Along with our Go Sun stove are two surprisingly good old solar panels from Canadian Tire. I wired to keep our batteries topped up, which in turn allows us to run the systems on our boat, such as the autopilot, chart plotter, and radio. We were all powered up and ready to leave. Join us next time as we finally make our departure from San Francisco, along with our friends on SV My Way. Thank you.